Hey guys, Nicole Spinoza with The Shorts Off Queen, and today on the channel, I'm gonna give you the ultimate guide on how to work with real estate investors. Like, how do you get more deals and how do you connect with investors so that you can be that agent? Let's get to it. All right, so before we get into today's video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We've got videos every week for realtors specifically and real estate investors. And let me know in the comments where you're watching this from and if you're an investor or a realtor. First and foremost, I know that investors don't think realtors have any value. They just are there to open doors and stick a house on the MLS and realtors don't think investors are loyal. And coming from someone that you know, is a realtor and an investor, as well as I've been in both worlds my entire career, I get both sides. But I also understand that that relationship is mutually beneficial if you work with the right people. So if you're a realtor that is wanting to work with investors and really get more deals, right? Like how do you um, fill up your pipeline? Because we're always looking for business as a realtor and how to stick out among other realtors. You can you know, promote your brand and, and people can know who you are. It's very important to understand that investors have a completely different mindset than buyers. And the biggest mistake I see realtors make is that they treat investors like they do traditional buyers. And that's the, the biggest mistake that you can make because investors just care about their numbers. So if you know how to figure out if a property is cash flowing, if you know how, what a property is worth, if you know your numbers, you can be the biggest asset for a real estate investor. And it's gonna be your job to show them what you can bring to the table and why they need you as part of their team. Because the reality is investors need us. They need us so that they don't put those shitty uh, camera phone pictures on the internet. They devalue, you know, on really knowing how to flip properties. They devalue like how to buy good investments because they kind of just get in there thinking like, okay, I don't need to pay a commission. I'll just list it just like for sale by owners, right? Like pretty much the same mindset. And we know as realtors how important it is to properly market the property so that you can get the most buyers, which means a higher return because you're gonna get more offers. So it's important to show that to an investor, show them how you're marketing the home, show them how you can source properties. So all of that is gonna be huge, a huge asset for a real estate investor so that, that you can take that part and that piece off of their plate so that they can do what they do best and, and investing into their properties. So understand investors mindset if it's all about the numbers. If they don't care that the property is cute, they don't care about any of that. They care about is this going to cash flow? Is this going to work for my business model? Okay? So I want to talk about the different type of investors because not all real estate investors are the same. Every exit strategy is different. So yes, they all invest in real estate in some type of way, but someone that does a buy and hold where they're you know, looking to build their portfolio is gonna have completely different criteria than someone that's, that is going to you know, flip a property. So let's go over the different type of investors so you know how to work with them, okay? So first, wholesalers. Now, wholesalers have a horrible reputation in the real estate investing world, mostly because it is the easiest way to get into the business by just you know, signing a piece of paper, which is a contract, and not actually performing. So let's explain what a wholesaler does. So a wholesaler essentially gets a homeowner to agree to sell the house at a low price, and then they assign their interest in the contract to an end buyer. So they don't actually close on the contract, they just charge a fee for facilitating the transaction. They found the seller, and then they found someone to buy the property at a higher price. Now, not all wholesalers are bad. Like I've wholesaled properties in the past and I know a ton of amazing wholesalers. That's just one exit strategy. So it's important to make sure that you know who you're working with. You know, understand that if they tie up a property and they put it under contract, can they actually follow through? Do they have the funds to be able to close? I worked with, you know, my first interaction with a real estate investor was working with a wholesaler and I had, of course, no idea that it was a wholesaler. I just knew that this guy wanted to buy properties and I wanted to sell it to him. So I found three sellers, three sellers 
to sell him these properties. And there was three that were under contract, all different agents on each transaction. Okay. I had no idea. I had it signed. I got the checks from him. Every single one of his earnest money bounced. So I'm thinking in my brain, I'm like, hey, look at me. I'm a little freaking rock star. I just got three contracts and three closings and mentally already spent my commission and got three angry realtors that called me saying, hey, what's going on? The earnest money bounced. Like what's going on? The option fee um, check bounced. And then the investor ghosted me because it turned out that he had no clue what to do. He got these, um, he, he got all excited because he got a contract signed. And then when he went to sell the contract and assign it to someone else, he realized that it was too expensive, that it was too high. And instead of telling me, he just completely, you know, bounced. And now I had to deal with the aftermath. And so of course that was a very hard and expensive lesson because I had spent so much time working with him to understand that he could actually never follow through uh, with buying these houses. So don't make that mistake. Make sure that you're asking them, you know, do they have the funds? Are they able to actually purchase the properties? And know this, you know, as an agent, if you're looking at the deal and you're saying, okay, at this price, there's no way that you're gonna be able to find an end buyer because there's not enough spread then, then you know that wholesaling might not be the right avenue for that deal because they have to buy at a deep discount for it to make sense for everyone to make money. The second type of investor is a buy and hold investor, someone that is looking to build their portfolio, a rental portfolio. It can be someone that's actively looking for investments as an investor, or it could just be someone that um, has a W-2 job or has another career and, hey, they want to create passive income. What's really important with this type of investor is not necessarily the deep discount of equity, so getting the house really cheap. What's super important is, is this property going to cash flow? The first thing you should be doing is looking up other rentals in the area so that you know how much this investor can rent the property out compared to other properties. You know, is it is it an area that rents pretty quickly? You know, are the number do the numbers make sense that if he buys it at X amount of dollars, is he going to get a return if he rents it out at X amount of dollars? So cash flow is the most important part. Um, of this process, learning your cap, the cap rate is super important. So know your numbers and understand that when you're working with these type of investors. Um, most investors that are looking to you know, buy and hold are not going, going to do a major renovation. So most likely, you know, a property that is like a light cosmetic um, that just needs like paint and carpet and things like that would be an ideal house for an investor to just turn around, you know, put a couple bucks in it and then rent it out. Also, this strategy is long term. So these properties need to be in an area that would rent well um, and rent pretty quickly. The third type of investor is somebody that flips homes. And of course we know HGTV, Flip or Flop, all of these shows um, that, are, that are flipping properties, we know that these type of investors need a deep discount and generally purchase really ugly homes, houses that are not gonna finance, that scare a traditional buyer. Um, but with that said, if they have all of those repairs, that means they need a deep discount. So flips are probably the hardest type of properties to find because you need to get a deep enough discount to fix the house and then sell the property at a profit. So understand that everyone has different numbers. So there's really, there is a rule of thumb in the industry where they say, okay, as long as you get 70% of the after repair value. So for example, um, you know, if the after repair value, which is what you can sell it at its best and highest um, price is $100,000, you just need 70% of that $100,000 minus any of the repair costs. That's the rule of thumb in the industry. But I don't even like saying that because what you really need to do is talk to that individual investor because every investor buys at different prices. It's all going to depend on what their numbers look like. You could work with a home investor franchise, which it, which are the We Buy Ugly House people, and we have a lot of relationship with home investors, and they buy at a completely different price as opposed to other investors we work with that are a way smaller company that it might just be that investor and their crew where they'll buy at a higher price because they have less ex less expenses. So don't assume um, what the investor's numbers are. Talk to them. How are they going to purchase the property? You know, what does it look like? What do they need from you as the realtor so that once you find that property and you identify it's a good deal, what's that process look like? 
And I'm telling you, if you do that, you are gonna be such a huge value add and a huge asset to their team. The hardest part in this business is finding the deal. I'm gonna say that because you as the realtor have so much value. There are always gonna be investors that you that will buy if it's at the right price. So if you can source properties that have that need repairs, that you can find those homeowners and even in your like, say, your sphere of influence of people that you could reach out to that need to sell and you make relationships with cash buyers, that's a huge uh, value add when you're going to listing appointments and things like that. So don't forget that and make sure that no matter who you're working with, that you're asking questions like how they're able to purchase the property, what their process is, when they can close, so you have all of that ready once you find a deal. As always, you can join our free Facebook group, the only short sale group worth being a part of. We'd love to have you a part of our community. Don't forget about our four week boot camp. It's actually right on the screen behind me. Our four week boot camp. that's four realtors where we cover everything as part of the short sale process. We teach you how to negotiate, we teach you how to do HUDs to clear title, um, the short sale process from start to finish, how to work with sellers, how to find sellers. I mean, literally everything. It's a mentorship that's condensed into four weeks for realtors that are wanting to get into this niche. Um, so definitely reach out to me if this is something that you're interested in. Uh, we also have a nationwide network where we partner with agents all over the country. So if you are a real estate agent that you're looking for a place for education and to really be a part of something bigger for more business um, and to really partner, I'd love to speak with you about it. Um, in our description in the um, video, you'll see how to hop on my calendar, um, you know, so that we can just see if that's a good fit for you. Um, so. Hopefully this video added value and I'll, I'll see you guys next time.